All right, you will know here where the uh, fluorine has just been introduced that there is a distinct stimulation of all the cells as they react to the poison. This we take to be a defense mechanism. Then it be things begin to slow up and reproduction is definitely inhibited. Here we have another a demonstration of uh, the uh, destruction of cells by a perfusion of one part in 30 million. Notice the swelling of the mitochondria in the body of the cells. Notice the compaction of the uh, material in the center or vital spot which we call the nucleus of the cells. That too is evidence of injury. Note the swelling of the membranes around the cells. This makes it impossible for them to absorb foodstuff. Note they're shriveling up now. There are no cells dividing. All is becoming still. Most of the cells are dead or dying. This demonstrates the toxicity of this material. In summary, I wish to make it very clear again that this film which you have just seen is a graphic record of what we and Drs. Berry and Trillwood have seen in our cultures when they were perfused with dilute solutions of sodium fluoride. This film itself is presented here only to show that mammalian cells in tissue cultures can be and are damaged by fluorides and some even killed when their contact with sodium fluoride is in the concentration of one part in 30 million. And we do have photographic records showing almost the same thing in one part in 60 million. Poisonous sodium fluoride in these concentrations may not be toxic enough to kill the cells or to destroy an organ or possibly the individual himself. Nevertheless, in human body, such poisons are subtle, insidious, and if prolonged over months and years, as in this case where fluoridated water is being used, chronic disorders and upsets of function in one or more of the vital organs may ensue. Outward manifestations of such toxic effects may not be apparent at the time to the victim or to his physician. But the constant drinking of fluoridated water may bring about a gradual accumulation of damaged and scarred tissue in the various organs, resulting in the production of many vague complaints in some or in nearly all parts of the body. This makes it most difficult for the physician to diagnose unless one is very alert to the effects of fluoridated water and its consumption. To sum up all this then, one is forced to conclude that the safety of fluoridation has not yet been proved. The experiments that you have just seen cast most serious doubt on the safety of fluoridation. We feel compelled to agree with the Congressional Committee on Food and uh, Drugs and Chemicals who, after extensive investigations under the Honorable James J. Delaney of New York, way back some years ago, 1952, questioned the safety of fluoridation and urged caution. And above all, they emphasized the need for more research, even before anyone would consider fluoridation. To all this, we most heartily do agree. The proponents of fluoridation have not produced this research. The safety of fluoridation still needs to be proved. And we who have made this a film from over 24,000 photographs in continuity under the microscope at intervals of exactly 39 seconds between each film bring you this demonstration of toxic effects of fluoridation. We have only begun our research into the effects of drinking fluoridated water. We ask for your support.